Today, we're going to go out with biologist John Kalamakitis and Dr. Aaron Olson to tag the largest animals on the planet, blue whales. It should be a really wow, exciting show. Oh, that was close. Of all the areas in the world that blue whales have been studied after commercial whaling ceased, the California coast has the largest concentration of blue whales that we know. The density is highest during the summer and fall months in the Santa Barbara Channel. This is also a very busy shipping area. The channel serves as the shipping lanes into Los Angeles. Unfortunately, this brings whales and ships into close proximity. And during the summer of 2007, four adult blue whales were killed by collisions with ships. NOAA is asking ships to reduce their speed when whales are present and biologist John Kalamakitis is doing tagging research to learn more about what goes on underwater when the whales are feeding. Blue whales along the California coast are really being drawn by food. That's the main thing they're engaged in feeding. Blue whales are exclusively krill feeders, and so they go to where the krill is abundant. We've become much more interested recently in human impacts on whales, particularly things like the impact of uh, low frequency sound and underwater sound, and now with recent events in the Santa Barbara Channel with blue whales and ship strikes, how shipping might be affecting them. We have certain tools with these underwater tags. We can look at both what they're doing underwater, how they react, and maybe get a better picture of how to avoid some of these impacts. Once the tag releases, it is recovered by tracking its radio signal. Dr. Aaron Olson uses a directional antenna to help locate the tag. There it is. When the tag is recovered, Pieces of dead skin that stick to the suction cup are collected for DNA tracking. Then all of the electronic data is downloaded to the computer for analysis of the depth, time, and duration for each of the whale's dives. The scientists also get sound recordings of all the sounds in the water. With this, they can tell if there were any ships around and how the whale reacted to them. By having a better understanding of what goes on when the whales are feeding and what they do at night, the biologists hope they can find ways to reduce the whale ship collisions. I think a lot of the public really identifies with whales. And even though my studies deal just with whales, one of the important things that I think the public needs to realize is that to protect whales, we have to protect the marine environment as a whole. Be sure to watch our show on oil spills. We're going to travel to the Mississippi River, which is the largest drain in our country, and see what it takes to clean up an oil spill before it gets to the ocean. You're going to find out what cheerleader pom-poms and oil spills have in common. Stay with us. It's dirty work, but it's going to be an interesting show.